the brain is a computer, <laughs> most powerful computer known to humans, but it has the same functions as a computer. And I go, what does that mean? I say, well, back in the old days, when you would buy a computer and you could take it home and you could push the start button, it boots up, the screen lights up, you're ready to go. And I say, now do something, you know, surf the web, make a drawing, write an essay. And you go, no, I can't. I say, you got a brand new computer. What do you mean you can't do that? And I say, not until I put a program into the hard drive can I use this computer? And once I have the programs in there, then I can type on the keyboard and put my information in the computer. If there's no program, I can't interface the computer. So the human brain gets programmed, absolutely, in the first seven years of your life. I go, how do you get a program? I go, the brain is not at the level of consciousness as a predominant strength. I said, what do you mean level? I said, you put wires on a person's head. It's called electroencephalograph. I read brain function. But there are levels of vibrations. The higher it is, the more function in your consciousness. The lower it is, bottom line, delta, lowest vibration. You're not even conscious. You're sleeping, okay? But I say, for the first seven years of your life, your predominant brain activity is lower than consciousness. It's a vibration called theta, which is hypnosis. So I say, so a child's first seven years, they're not using their conscious creativity. They're not typing on the keyboard yet. They're just responding to the world through programs. I say, where'd they get the programs? By watching the parents, mother, father, observing their behavior. It's like theta is like video record. Whatever I just saw, I downloaded it. So if I'm watching my father, I see how the behavior uh, of the dad works. If I watch my mother, that's the behavior of the mother or the kids or the community. So um, critical point, the programming that we get in the first seven years comes from observing other people. Okay. And this is okay. If you got a good download, if you got a good teacher, you're observing and recording, that's good. But what if you have a person with a problem of their own? I say, well, then you downloaded that too, because there's no conscious filter that says, oh, good behavior, bad behavior. Nope, no filter. Everything in, download, program, good, bad, disempowering, it's in. The implications of what you're saying, obviously, are uh, just enormous, right? In a totally. person's development, because if they have a stable family, right, and and loving support and good role models and good parenting, right, they're they're gonna be programmed, you know, to to hopefully, I guess, develop into a person that is similar to the the good people in their life. But if, if healthy, they're in this, it's healthy. If, yeah, it's healthy. Right, in right. In harmony or disharmony. Right. Okay. And if there's disharmony, then uh, if you play that program, you're going to manifest disharmony. And you say, so, well, why should I play the programs? I'm over seven. I'm creator. I could type on the creative mind, wishes and desires, conscious mind. When it's in charge, it programs the computer to manifest wishes and desires. But monkey wrench, the whole monkey wrench revolves around this is that the conscious mind can not only look out your eyes. I like to say, look at the body as a vehicle and you're driving and the conscious, when the conscious mind's in charge, it's got its hands on the wheel and consciousness is wishes and desires. So when you're driving from consciousness, you're going toward what you want. But here's the, the, the sticky thing that gets in there and that is consciousness can think. And you go, so what? And I go, well, if I'm driving a vehicle, I'm looking out the window, I'm driving to where I want to go. But if I'm thinking, my consciousness is no longer looking out the window because thinking is inside. You know, uh, Chris, is, today's Tuesday. And if I asked you, tell me what you're doing on Friday. At this very instant, it's not written in front of you anywhere. But in a moment, you could think. And you can say, oh, on Friday, I'm doing this. And I go, where'd you get that information? Oh, thinking. I went inside. It wasn't written out here. So when you're in thought, your consciousness is no longer looking out the window, but it's looking inside for an answer or question or whatever. I go, well, if you're driving your real car and you got your hands on the wheel and you're conscious and you're looking out the window and you're driving to the destination, you know, where you want to go. Okay. But if you start thinking, guess what? Your consciousness is no longer looking out the window. I go, oh my God, then who's, who's going to drive the car? I go, the moment you're thinking, subconscious is autopilot. It knows how to drive a car. You practice. You have made a habit. You know how to drive it. You don't have to think about it. Subconscious can handle it. It's a million times more powerful than the conscious creative mind. 
And, and here comes the monkey wrench part. The average human, 95% of the day is the time they're thinking. I go, so what? I go, well, that means if they're thinking 95% of the time, then their life is not coming from wishes and desires. It's coming from downloaded programs. And that person will play these programs and be totally unaware of their behavior. I go, what do you mean? I say, they're not looking out at the world now. They're looking in. So whatever program is playing from the subconscious, that individual doesn't even see it, but everybody else does. And that's where, where you know, uh, 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 I love to tell a story. I say, you have a friend, you know your friend's behavior very well. You know your friend's parent. One day you see your friend has the same behavior as the parent. You're going to volunteer. Go, hey, Bill, you're just like your dad. And I say, back away from Bill. I know exactly what Bill's going to say. I know it. And you know it. And he's going to say, how can you compare me to my dad? I'm nothing like my dad. And people laugh. And I go, that's the most profound story in the whole world. I go, what do you mean? Everybody else can see that Bill behaves like his dad, a program that he downloaded in the first seven years. The only one who doesn't see it is Bill. I say, how come Bill doesn't see it? Because he's thinking, so he's not observing and all of us are Bill. Every day we're doing that. And I say, so what does that mean? I say, well, if you have good programs and it doesn't make a difference, you're paying attention or not. A good program will take you to a good destination. But if you got a bad program, it will manifest a bad situation. Thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, why not subscribe? Here's a link to do that. And if you'd like to watch the full interview, you can find it at chrisbeatcancer.com. There's a link to it in the description right below this video.